I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And as part of our ongoing series of doing on-farm culturing, today we're going to be talking about the critical decision of selecting the appropriate culture media. Now remember, when we're doing on-farm culture, we're trying to implement a selective treatment strategy. And to do that, we're trying to make a diagnosis of which type of bacteria is causing the symptoms that we see in the cow. The purpose of the on-farm culture laboratory is to get a rapid provisional diagnosis on the farm so that we can link that diagnosis to our treatment decision. And the key thing to understand is that the methods we use in on-farm culturing are different than cultures that are performed in a real diagnostic laboratory. In a real diagnostic laboratory, there's a variety of fairly sophisticated methods that are performed to, to arrive at a highly accurate diagnosis. In an on-farm culture system, what we're using is simply selective medias that we're plating the milk on that will only grow certain types of bacteria. And so what we're trying to do is simply not arrive at the most accurate diagnosis of the type of pathogen, but simply arrive at a decision that will help us make understand whether or not we need to give an antibiotic. So selecting the right type of media is a very critical decision in running an on-farm culture program on your farm. When we decide to do an on-farm culturing program, the very first question is, what are the treatment decisions that will be made based on the type of bacteria that grow? And when we understand the answer to that question, we can select the appropriate media to help make the appropriate decision. The second question that we'll have is once we've selected the media, do we really understand what will grow on that type of um, agar that we're using? And this is a little more complicated than it seems sometimes. For example, some red agars are blood agar and they'll grow all, virtually all the types of bacteria that, that cause mastitis on most dairy farms. However, other red augers are selective medias and they'll grow only particular types of bacteria, such as gram-positive bacteria. So when you purchase a media, when you make the decision of what to buy to perform your on-farm culturing system, it's very critical that you ask your supplier what type of bacteria will grow in the different um, areas on those plates. Depending on the region that you live in, you may have access to different types of medias than we're discussing today. We're just discussing really the most common medias that are available for use in on-farm culture in our region. Those medias are biplates, triplates, and quadplates. And those are basically terminology that refer to how many different augers are present on the plate that we inoculate with the milk? A biplate, for example, would have two types of media, a triplate three and a quadplate four. And uh, depending on where you're at, you may have access to others. If so, just be sure that you ask your supplier what types of bacteria will grow on those plates. Another important thing to understand is the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria include bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus, coagulase negative Staphylococci, Streptococci, and others of those similar bacteria. Gram-negative bacteria generally refer to E. coli, Klebsiella, and others. For more specifics on differences among those, you can refer to previous videos which talk about treatment-specific uh, procedures for these types of bacteria. Let's start by talking about biplates. Biplates are the simplest type of media normally used in on-farm culture systems. They usually contain two selective medias and those medias can result in just a couple of decisions. Usually the red media is selective and will only grow gram-positive bacteria. And on the other side of the plate, there's usually a pinkish type media, which is selective only for gram-negative bacteria. So on the red side, only gram-positive bacteria would grow, 
and on the pink side, only gram-negative bacteria would grow. There's really three typical decisions made in an on-farm culture program that uses biplates. Often people will treat with an antibiotic if gram-positive, no treat if some of, with some of the mild cases of gram-negative, and usually no treat if there's no growth at all, all on either side of that biplate. A triplate is very similar to a biplate but adds an extra media. This has three selective medias. The red media is very similar to the biplate. It's selective for gram positive only and usually you can differentiate Staph aureus from other gram positive bacteria by looking at um, characteristics of how the organism appears on the plate. However, there's a second darker red media which is selective only for streptococci. And then the third media is the same as the biplate. It's a pink media, which is selective and will only grow gram-negative bacteria. So the decisions that can be made using a triplate would be no treatment, if there's no growth on the plate or if it's a gram-negative. A decision on treatment of Staph aureus or not to treat Staph aureus, if you can identify it based on how it looks on the gram-positive side. And because there's a differentiation for the streptococci, decisions about specific treatments, for example, maybe more days of treatment can be made if streptococci are identified. The most complicated type of media we typically have in an on-farm culture laboratory is a quad plate. That quad plate contains all three of the medias that were found in the triplate, but also has a small section that has blood auger. That blood auger section will normally grow most types of bacteria that cause mastitis. And when unusual bacteria grow, you may have growth there that doesn't show up on the um, selective medias. When you see growth there that doesn't show up on the selective medias, that's a good signal you may need to send a sample to a real diagnostic laboratory who can help you arrive at a more complex diagnostic decision. Farmers often ask me, what type of media should I use on my farm when I'm doing on-farm culturing? And my advice is select the simplest media that will help you direct your treatment decision. You're not going to be able to make the complex decisions on is it Klebsiella pneumonia or is it Streptococcus dysgalactia. Keep things simple. The research shows that the accuracy of on-farm culturing approaches about 80% when you're using a biplate and making simple decisions like is there no growth, is it gram positive, or is it gram negative the accuracy declines as more complex decisions are made. I would advise that if you have Staph aureus and know that you need to be looking for that on your farm, make sure you use a media that can help you detect it. Other than that, I'd advise you to use the simplest media to help you make the easiest decisions. Mm -hmm.